I and all sentient beings until enlightenment go for refuge in the Buddha, Dharma, and Sangha. This I consider to be a Dharma Pala, a protector of the Dharma. So he's protecting me from uh, all kinds of harm. It's actually a terracotta figure, a copy of a terracotta figure. Okay, so uh, Jack Kerouac uh, is a famous author from the 50s and 60s, I guess. I don't know if he made it to the 60s. Uh, did he die in, in the 60s? Let's see where it says when he died. Well, he, oh, he died in 1969, so he did make it to the 60s. He, com he completed this book in 1956, but it wasn't published until 1997. And then uh, they republished it in this version. And ro ro for this version, Robert Thurman, uh, was asked to do a, an introduction. It was a pretty long introduction. Uh, X, 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 V, I, I, I think that's 37, <laughs> 37 pages intro. Uh, by Robert Thurman is a, um, is a well-known uh, popularizer and, and proponent of Tibetan Buddhism and the Dalai Lama. Uh, let's see. So, what a surprise, says Robert Thurman, working on this introduction. It has become apparent to me that Jack Kerak was the lead bodhisattva. Bodhisattva. Bodhisattva way back there in the 1950s, among all of our very American predecessors. To introduce Kerak, introducing Shakyamuni Buddha, I'm just going to be personal since I'm not a scholar of the beats and their literature. But Kerak's interpretation of beat, that it stands for beatific, which is how I like to translate the Samboga of Buddha's Sambhogakaya, beatific body, his celestial unif universal bliss form, rather than for beat up those who can't take the industrial slave life with its productions and its banks and its wars. This won my heart right away. Obviously, it did way back when I just couldn't remember till now. So, uh, so Bob Thurman read uh, books by uh, Jack Kerouac when he was a teenager. He probably read the Dharma Bums, or maybe he couldn't have read this one because this wasn't published back then. So it must have been the Dharma bombs that he read. Maybe, no, he, he says he didn't read On the Road. And uh, so I'm going to skip the intro. It's pretty long. And I'm going to uh, go over the author's note. This book follows what the sutras say. It contains quotations from the sacred scriptures of the Buddhist canon. Some quoted directly, some mingled with new words. Some not quotations, but made up of new words of my own selection. The storyline follows Gotama Buddha's life as represented in Ashvagosha's Buddha Charita. 
and in Narasu's Life of the Historic Buddha with adornments and rearrangements. Uh, I remember life, uh, that he had read Life of the Historic Buddha, so I, I thought it was just Life of the Buddha. I forget about it. Historic. So I was hoping that this book called Life of the Buddha would be the one that he read. But this is this is another book. It's called Life of the Buddha. It's, it's, uh, let's see. Who wrote it? Who wrote this one? Uh, this one. Is Life of the Buddha. According to the ancient text. In Monuments of India by A. Fosher. Uh, a bridge translation by Simon Brangier Boas. This West Wesleyan University Press. So A. Fosher, I think he's French, and so it was translated by someone at Wesleyan University Press, Middletown, Connecticut. So it was uh, translated in 1963, but the original edition was, uh, the French edition was written in 1949. Okay, so uh, I like this book because of some of the pictures in it, but they're on black and white, but they're pictures of Indian statues of the Buddha. They're all uh, worn down because they're so old. They're kind of like Greek kind of statues. They're probably all in museums now, in different places in the world, or maybe in India. Let's see. This one, this one is at Fog Museum at Harvard University. It, it comes from Karachi, some place in India. They took all the wonderful statues of the Buddha in India and put them in universities. And of these are from Harvard. Oh, here's one. Uh, this one's in India. It belongs to the government of India. Department of Archaeology. Oh, okay. That I imagine all these uh, statues were at one time painted in color, so they might have must have been quite impressive to the people. <clears throat> okay, of that of their time. Okay, so let me uh, continue. So yeah, so uh, uh, Jack Kerouac mentions the of the book called Life of the Historic Buddha by Narasu, N-A-R-A-S-U, and Ashvagosha's Buddha Charita. So I'm going to have to try to find those books. But, uh, so maybe those books and some other books are what he follows to to create this uh, briefer version, I would say. He mentions the Lankavatara scripture, the Dhammapada, the, Angura, the Anguttara Nikaya, the Itivuttaka, the Diga Nikaya, the Majima Nikaya, the Teragata, and the, mm. the, the Vinaya Pitaka, the Prajna Paramita Hridaya Sutra, the Samyutta Nikaya and even Chuang Tse Dao De Jing, the Life of Mila Repa, Ma, the Mahayana Sangra in a thousand places. Hmm. So I guess those uh, were used uh, perhaps in quoting certain things or they helped understand something about the Oh, he says that the heart of the book is an embellished precious of the mighty 
Surangama Sutra, whose author, who seems to be the greatest writer who ever lived, is unknown. He lived in the first century and drew from the source of, uh, sources of his own time and wrote for the sake of brightest divine enlightenment. So I have, des I have designed this to be a handbook for Western understanding of the ancient law. Their purpose is to convert. May I live up to these words, to sing the praises of the Lord monk, Lordly Monk and declare his acts from first to last without self-seeking and self-honor, without desire for personal renown, but follow what the scriptures say to benefit the world has been my aim. Ashwagosha, 1st century A.D. Hmm. Hmm. Okay. So, and I, I, I had already read some of that last time. Oh shit! Battery, 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 critically low. I better plug this in. I get the card turned on. <laughs> Turn this up. This is like a fan. Okay. So, I started reading the book here. I guess this is the one and only chapter. So it's right here. And I read uh, to here. I'm not sure where I finished off in this page, but I'll start here. When the king heard of his son's decision to leave home, his son is uh, Prince Siddhartha. Siddhartha. To leave home and take up the holy life, he protested tearfully. But the young monarch said, Oh, place no difficulties in my path. Your son is dwelling in a burning house. Would you indeed prevent his, he, his leaving? To solve doubt is only reasonable. Who could forbid a man to seek it, its explanation? And he made it clear that he would rather take his life than to be held by filial duty to go on in ignorance. Wow. Seeing his father crying, the prince decided to make his departure by night. Not only the Maharaja, but the beautiful Princess Yasodhara was beseeching him not to renounce the duties and responsibilities of royal reign and of married life. With his head in Yasodhara's lap, he inwardly grieved knowing the suffering that his full renunciation would cause her. And he pondered, my loving mother, when she bore me. With, with, with deep affection, painfully carried me. And then when born, she died, not permitted to nourish me. One alive, the other dead, gone by different roads. Where now shall she be found? Like as in a wilderness on some high tree, all the birds living with their mates assemble in the evening and at dawn disperse. So are the separations of the world. Looking at his three-year-old son, Rahula, the thoughts dawned that he would utter later Call his name Rahula, a bond, for here is another bond with which I must break. To Kandaka, his servant in the mid watches of the night, when everything was ready, he said, Saddle then my horse and quickly bring it here. I wish to reach the deathless city. My heart is fixed beyond all change. Resolved I am and bound by sacred oaths. 
quietly they rode out the royal gate. Looking back once, the trembling prince cried, If I escape not birth, old age, and death, forever, forevermore I pass not thus along. Master and servant rode through the forest of the night. At dawn, arriving at a spot, they dismantled and re rested. You have borne me well, said the prince, patting his horse into his servant. Ever have you followed after me when riding, and deeply have I felt my debt of thanks. I only knew you as a man true-hearted. But with many words, I cannot hold you here. So let me say in brief to you, we have now ended our relationship. Take then my horse and ride back again for me during the long night past that place I thought sought to reach now I have obtained. Seeing the servant was full of reluctance and remorse, the prince handed him a precious jewel. O oh, Kandaka, take this gem, and going back to where my father is, take the jewel and lay it reverently, reverently before him to signify my heart's relation to him. And then, for me, request the kings to stifle every fickle feeling of affection and say that I, to escape from birth and age and death, have entered in the wild forest of painful discipline. Not that I may get a heavenly birth, much less because I have no tenderness of heart, or that I cherish any cause of bitterness, but only that I seek the way of ultimate escape. <laughs> My very ancestors, victorious kings, thinking their throne established and immovable, have handed down to me their kingly wealth. I, thinking only on religion, put it away. I rejoice to have acquired religious wealth. And if you say that I am young and tender, that the time for seeking is not come. You ought to know that to seek true religion, there is never a time not fit. Impermanence and fickleness, the hate of death, these ever follow us. And therefore, I embrace the present day, convinced that now is the time to seek. Wow. Oh, wow. Excuse me. Um, I don't know why I'm sleepy. Oh, I guess I do know. I stayed up uh, a lot of the night working on something. Mm. Didn't have to get up or kind of early. Uh, so, wow. So, the, the prince is trying to get um, his father and his wife to understand that there's n there's never a better time than now to get on the religious uh, spiritual uh, path religious in a spiritual sense not in the institutional sense. So he's giving up the material wealth and exchanging it for acquiring acquiring religious wealth. And he's saying that now you may think I'm I'm just a young kid. Well, he's actually, at that time, 29 or so years old. And because at, at 
at one time or or in in Hindu um, way of life and many other cultures uh, after you you uh, you've reached a, a, an advanced age and you've uh, taken care of your duties like uh, you have uh, raised a family and now the, the kids are gone so there's and 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 you li have a way of of having your wife be taken care of some kind of social security for her then you're allowed to leave the household life and go in to some sort of monastic life to practice uh, and gain spiritual wealth but he's saying uh, if you think that I am young and tender and that that time for for seeking is not come you ought to know that to seek true religion there is never a time not fit because impermanence and fickleness and the hate of death these ever follow us and therefore I embrace the present day convinced that now is the time to seek poor Kandaka cried Daka, I believe, is his servant. You should overcome this sorrowful mood. It is for you to comfort yourself, all creatures, each in its way, foolishly arguing that all things are constant. Would influence me today not to forsake my kin and relatives, but when death and come to be a ghost how then let them say can I be kept so he's trying to convince Kandaka that when he uh, goes back to the palace or whatever when he meets up with uh, his father uh, Prince Siddhartha's father the king and his mother I know his stepmother you could say because his uh, biological mother died uh, after a week of uh, giving birth so he was taken care of by the sister, which was also uh, married, happened to be married to his father. And so, and also uh, he is, he's considering his uh, wife, uh, Yasodara, and his son. So he's t I think he's telling Kandaka, his, his, uh, his servant, to go uh, try to explain to them why he escaped that uh, there's no better time than now to seek uh, religious wealth because you may die and then then what you're trying He's trying to tell them, trying to tell them all that, why are you trying to keep me away from this career change? When you know that when, when uh, we may suddenly die, we may, we never know when that could happen. And if it happens, then what, what was the use of, of keeping me? Of trying to keep me as long as possible I may die and and uh, what good was it to try to keep me because you know everything is impermanent 
in fickle. So we have we have to embrace the present day and convince ourselves that now is the time to seek. Now is the time to seek. Now is the time for renunciation. Now is the time to give up on the idea that that the modern material material world will solve all our dilemmas. That modern medicine will fix us. That high technology, like the one I'm using, will mm, enlighten us. I don't know. Will teach us. I don't know. What and what are we learning? Yo. <laughs> Sorry. Uh, I'm so sleepy. So where did I, how far did I get? I think I'll stop. I'm, I'm so slow. I'm taking it. Uh, yeah. Okay, there I stop right there. And then uh, so I'm going to try to upload this video tonight. Like right now, it, I think today is the 12th. Uh, let's see if I can get this video up without having to edit it so much. I'm not going to waste my time putting up uh, so much uh, literature text in into the video. So... Not much explaining, so if you don't understand something, or if I'm not gonna uh, worry about um, putting helpful footnotes, I guess, in the form of text on top of the video, yeah, like I did in the last video. Where there was a, I tried to put a lot into it, and maybe it it, it was counterproductive and may annoy people <laughs> from uh, trying to listen and trying to read at the same time. Sometimes, well, maybe it might have helped some places. But this one, I think, I'm gonna, I'm gonna have to. Give up on that because it takes so long. I'm sorry. Uh, I'm pretty sleepy, I guess. I could drink some coffee. Let's go here to the Taco Bell. Or should I go to Wawa? What a dilemma. I'm more thirsty. Okay. So. I dedicate the, this reading and meditating on, uh, on the life of the Buddha as uh, told, retold by Jack Kerouac back in 1955 or 6 he wrote this. And uh, it wasn't published until uh, 80 something, uh, until way after he died, and republished again more recently. This is uh, the. This, I guess, is a 2008 version of the book. Who's the publisher? Penguin Books. So I hope you liked this meditation and reading on Buddha's life and may it benefit all sentient beings and I'm happy to be able to do this. Thank you for uh, allowing me to. And have a good day, everyone. And, uh...
Yeah, meditate on this throughout the day. Thank you.